everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm so excited to be filming this episode for you today. And in today's episode, we're actually going to be answering a user's question. So oftentimes we get, well, not often, all the time, we get emails. And every once in a while, we'll see one that's really a good question that we think a lot of people would enjoy and learn from. So that's what we're doing today. We're going to be answering Nick's question. And Nick asks uh, two different questions that I think are really, really key topics to touch on. On the topic of nitrogen fixation. So we have a video out there called, uh, the un I think it's called The Unfortunate Truth About Nitrogen Fixing Crops. And in that episode, we got a lot of people that were really upset, but unfortunately they're upset by the truth. And I think that's what's, that's what's kind of uh, off-putting for me is, you know, don't, you know, you don't have to shoot the messenger. This is just the truth of, of how it is. Um, and in that episode, we stated that uh, no nitrogen was, uh, was really shared with other plants because the bulk majority of it was actually put into producing fruit and flowers. And so if you grow uh, beans next to tomatoes, or, or in our case, we we're giving the example of the Three Sisters Garden, where you're talking about growing squash, beans, and corn in, all together. Um, now, in that episode, I stated that it, it just was not uh, something that, that happened. Um, and we got a lot of backlash saying, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. I heard that nitrogen fixing crops do share some nitrogen. And my whole point behind that episode is you have to understand where I'm coming from here. Uh, we're talking about home gardeners. We're talking about people that even on a garden of my size, okay, we're, we're talking like small scale here. There's hardly enough nitrogen shared between bean plants. Yes, nitrogen is shared on a very, very small amount about 1% of the nitrogen produced, 1% of the nitrogen produced per plant can be shared throughout the surrounding root zone with, uh, with neighboring plants. So when I look at 1%, oftentimes people say, hold on, hold on, there's truth to that. Big farmers, they use nitrogen, except for the fact that most farmers will turn their, their plants in. Another thing is that most farmers are dealing with many, many acres. So when you take that 1% and multiply it over by 50 to 100 acres, of course the nitrogen adds up. That's a no-brainer. But if you just have three or four bean plants, or even in my case, if I took this entire bed of bean plants and planted them, planted tomato plants in here, there still would be a not enough nitrogen shared between plants. Um, and so Nick asked this question, getting back to Nick's question, he saw that video and it raised a question. He said, he said it makes sense that some nitrogen goes into fruiting and flowering, but is there really no significant amount left after that? I would expect that tilling in the beans, even after harvesting, would add some significant amount of nitrogen. Is this false? Um, uh, let's put, uh, and he said, uh, I'd expect it to be less than if you did it before fruiting. Also, uh, if you leave the fruit and flowers on the plant and then till it in, uh, what happens then? Um, and then his next question, uh, is, is tilling necessary? Is tilling in the nitrogen fixing plant necessary? Or is it more effective than chop and drop? So I'm gonna be answering these questions in this episode. I'm real excited about it. Um, and so the first part to that is, um, is the nitrogen fixing crop still beneficial to be tilled into, into the garden after, uh, you know, after the, the fruit has been pulled off of it, in our case, beans. Let's just use that as an example since that's uh, the best example that I have here, um, beans. So beans, when you harvest the beans, most of the nitrogen produced in the nodules goes into the fruiting. About 80 to 85% of the, of the nitrogen fixed goes into fruits and, uh, fruit and flowers. So after the flowers uh, produce fruit. So um, really those are kind of the same thing. Um, so you have about 10 to 15% more nitrogen or le nitrogen left. Um, and remember we said about 1% of that nitrogen is, is shared kind of with the surrounding soil. Um, so either way, still, it's pretty much a wash. Let's say 10 to 15% just for, um, you know, just for the case of this video that goes into producing biomass. And what biomass is, 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 is growth. It's anything that's, uh, basically organic matter. So if you have a, 
like a sunflower. Sunflowers are super awesome at creating biomass because they will they will just they will expand into massive amounts of of green organic growth that you can mulch up and turn into compost. Um, beans, biomass, absolutely. All these leaves, that's biomass. The nitrogen um, from the roots is producing uh, uh, you know nutrients for the plant to use to grow as well. Um, so, Nick, to answer your first question, yes, you absolutely can get nitrogen from tilling in or, uh, or chopping and dropping, we'll get into that, um, by simply using the plant for its uh, organic matter content, you're absolutely all day going to be getting nitrogen. In any case, you're going to get nitrogen. It doesn't matter if it's a nitrogen fixing crop or not. If you use the plant's biomass, you're always going to be returning uh, what it took out back into, um, back into the soil. Now, if it's a fruiting crop, no matter what you do, you're always going to have some loss, which is why I always, 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 100% of the time, recommend remineralizing, refertilizing, and giving back to the soil what is taken out. Um, so in a lot of cases, you're going to have some loss because I don't know in any plant that we're growing, would you ever just, you know, would you ever not take anything from it? I mean, even lettuce, um, you know, it's, you're not producing a fruit, but you're taking the leaves and that those leaves uh, are biomass that uh, took nutrients to grow and you're taking it off of the premise. So assuming you never harvested from the lettuce and you turned it in, you'd basically have a, a net gain of, of zero. Um, anything that was in the soil is now back in the soil. Um, so what we, what we never want as gardeners or as farmers is a net loss. You don't ever wanna lose uh, nutrients from the soil. So that's the purpose of, of putting back in. Now, by tilling in, you're going, to, uh, you're going to lessen the effects of that net loss, um, but you're still going to have to put something back in. So the next thing to consider before I get on to Nick's second question is the common misconception that all nitrogen fixing crops will produce nitrogen. Now, this is a huge misconception in the sense that uh, people just assume if you plant a bean plant or plant a pea plant or have clover that nitrogen will automatically be fixed. This could not be further from the truth, and that's because b uh, based on the variety of legume that you're growing, whether it's peas, um, you know, peas, beans, uh, clover, doesn't quite matter. Each specific variety of legume needs a specific variety of rhizobia, uh, rhizobium bacteria, and that rhizobia bacteria will infect the root of the of the legume that it's uh, that it's matched with. So if you have, let's say, um, A, uh, I'm using letters. So if you have A, B, or C, let's use A legume, and you have A, B, or C uh, rhizobium bacteria, and let's say you take, A, you have in your soil B rhizobium bacteria, A and B don't they don't do anything. Um, they'll just pretty much, they, they, I mean, they'll be in the soil, but they won't produce any nitrogen fixing nodules on the roots. So you have to have A and A, B and B, uh, as a very loose example, um, cause that's gonna get into a whole different discussion, a whole nother video uh, that we just don't have time for today. On to Nick's second question, which is whether or not chopping and dropping, uh, which one is, whether or not chopping and dropping or tilling is more effective. So. Depending on which method you choose, there's a lot of different uh, thoughts and things like that. Uh, the first one is that chopping and dropping acts as a mulch, which will cover the soil. That is true, definitely in favor of that. However, if you're someone that uh, does not like just piles of stuff laying around your garden, this is not, that would not be for you. Um, another thing is that uh, if you want more a localized effect, tilling is going to be for you, or you don't even have to till. Tilling gets a really bad rep, but I think uh, in most cases, just taking the plant and tucking it under the soil will have a much more localized effect because um, if you have your plant on top of the soil, you never really know where that plant is going to go because, uh, I mean, uh, as it's breaking down, water can wash the nutrients further away. Um, different uh, bugs and, and nematodes and things that break down plant matter could be traveling through the soil and and take it away from this uh, specific area. And so 
Um, also, it takes a lot longer to break down because this air pocket up here, you know, this spot uh, not under the soil, doesn't have anything that will break down plant matter. Anything that will break down plant matter has to be touching soil. So the more parts of the plant that are touching the soil, the faster it's going to break down, allowing for you to um, have, see the benefits of doing it, uh, of chopping and dropping or, or tilling much faster. Um, so I personally am, am a fan of composting. I just take it all over to the compost pile. It does leave the premise, so it is uh, not as much of a closed system as I would like, but it does uh, go to our compost pile where we break it down and compost it much quicker than we can use it back in the garden. Um, if you're someone that does not compost, uh, my next second or my next favorite method would be just tucking it under the soil. Uh, then the third would be chopping and dropping. Um, there's just something about it personally that I don't like. But again, that gets into personal preference. At the end of the day, you will see the nutrients from the, the organic matter being, uh, being placed on the soil. It will be returned to the soil in some way, shape, or form, and it just might not be in this specific location. It will be in the general vicinity of where you, you chopped it and dropped it. So uh, that's that. I hope it really helped, Nick, and I do hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you do have any more questions, if anyone else has any more questions, post them in the comments box below. Uh, we make these videos to at least help one person out. That's why we know we're helping Nick out, but I guarantee you a bunch of other people were helped by this video, and it probably was even you. So if you were helped by this video, let us know in the comments box below what you learned. And um, Another thing is that if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, we really do try to, uh, ooh, we have some thunder rolling through. Uh, so anyways, I gotta hurry, but uh, hopefully you all enjoyed. Uh, but giving us a thumbs up definitely helps and uh, it lets you know, it lets us know that you did enjoy it. So as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home. We'll catch y'all later. See ya, bye.